I get a light in the charger, but it's dead. This, hey, it's not dead. I see a fan spinning. But then it turns off. Then it turns back on. But then it turns off. But then it turns on. Alright, let's see. What did you mess up? So you replace the battery, which means something with current sensing or battery charging circuitry, which is going to be right in this area of the board. The customer claims they changed the battery, and after that it was dead. Changing the battery is going to be something to do with the battery charging chip, U7000. U7000 is responsible for charging the battery. So let's take a look at that chip on the board. Okay, it's got a little bit of food on it. Nothing that I'm not used to. So the first thing we're going to do here is check current sensing. Current sensing is going to be between pins 27 and 28, pins 17 and 18. Now the way this is going to work is that this is a stream. This is power coming in from the adapter. And think of this as a stream. Now this chip, which is going to charge the battery and control the charger, is going to want to know how much power is going through the stream. Well, you can't see how, how fast the water is moving or how hard the water is moving by looking at a stream. You have to put your hand in the water. So what's going on here is think of R7020 as the hand in the water. And think of the U7000 like your, your friend who you want to tell how fast the water is moving. So what's going to happen is the voltage is going to go through R7020. There's going to be a teeny tiny itty bitty bicycle amount of voltage drop through R7020. And that teeny tiny voltage drop is going to get measured by U7000, which has a line going to the top and the bottom of that resistor. The greater the voltage drop, the more current being used. Now, there's a 10 ohm resistor sitting in between the U7000 chipset and this up here. So, R7022 is 10 ohms. This is 0 0.02 ohms, and that's 10 ohms. So, my loop between pins 27 and 28 should be 20.02 ohms. However, Let's see what we get on this board. My loop between those pins, eh, according to my multimeter software, is 20 ohms, so no problem. So now we're going to check the battery current sensing down here. That's going to be a different loop. That's got a 2.2 ohm resistor, a 0 ohm resistor, and 0 0.01 ohm resistor. So my total impedance of that circuit should be 2.21 ohms. And let's see if that's what we get over here. <gasps> 48 ohms? What? That is way too many ohms. All right. So there's a couple of possibilities here. Behind door number one, R7051 is blown. Behind door number two, R7052 is blown. Behind door number three, R7050 is blown. Behind door number four, the traces between the ISL and the resistors are blown. So how are we going to figure out what that is? Well, what we're going to do is use Paul Daniels' software to find those resistors and measure them individually. Don't delay. Check out Paul Daniels at pldaniels.com today. So I'm going to right-click on the software. I'm going to click on R7051, and it's going to show me right where it is on the board view. We're going to measure that resistor. And that resistor is fine. It's 2.5 ohms, probably closer to 2.2 ohms. The reason that is, is because the other resistor is going to be the one next to it. That's going to be the blown one. Why? Because that's the one that's under the damn edge bonding and underfill. Yay. Of course it's going to be that one that blows. It's an Apple product. It's always going to be the inconvenient resistor that blows. But what are you going to do? Mother. I'm letting a current sense resistor drive me nuts. But do you, do you guys understand why it is I went for this, even though it looked good? Do you understand why this was the circuit that I decided to spend my time on? Think of the user description. This is something that happens all too much in the forum that people are ignoring. They're ignoring the history of the device. You're like McNulty or um, Lenny Briscoe or one of those people. What was the story? What happened? This is not electronics repair. This is not engineering. This is not physics. This is not chemistry. This is not calculus. This is detective work. 
I got a 70 in almost all my classes in high school, and I had a cheat to get out of chemistry with a 55 or a 58 on my regents, and I can still do this. Why? Detective work. You got to see the whole picture. I plugged in the battery, I uh, plugged in a new battery, and when I plugged in my new battery, which they probably got off of Amazon, because they're a cheapskate, and I could tell that they're a cheapskate, because instead of buying a new cover, they taped their rubber pads to the lid on a machine where you can buy this bottom cover for $20 on eBay with good pads. Why would you do that unless you're cheap? So they most likely got some cheap-ass Amazon battery for 10 or 20 bucks, unlike those amazing batteries that you can get on store.rosmangroup.com. Don't delay. They won't fry your current sensing circuitry today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. No, I'm kidding. They're good batteries. But my point is, cheap battery plugged in. So then that brings me to the battery charging circuit. And this is something that you're probably not going to find if you're just looking for what looks bad, because nothing here looks bad. There's nothing wrong with this section of the board from a purely visual standpoint. So I, I go over to here, and I check the current sensing. Now I check the current sensing on the charger, and it works. I honestly kind of knew that worked before I even measured it, because that's not what was wrong. The battery current sensing circuit that's the one that's going to have the blown resistor. And there you go. It's a mystery case. It's a mystery case. And I solved the mystery. Now, do I get a burrito that tastes good because I solved the mystery? No! It's not fair! I want my burrito. Okay. But anyway, let's remove this. Yep, that audio I see is coming straight up off the board. You mother... Breathe, Lewis. Breathe. got to practice my Lamas breathing. I want to have kids someday, so I should practice my Lamas breathing. All right, so that's where it, when it's in place. Now I'd like to just make sure it's pressed evenly onto the board. If I were smart, I'd leave well enough alone. But Okay, you're good. And next comes up the resistor. And then we'll see if this worked, and I hope it did. I really hope that it did. With any luck, this did a. This is going to be a beautiful board. Okay, so let's see. Power on. Give me a chime. Dong. Yes, that's what I want to see. An apple and a nice long dong. You always want a nice long dong. Okay, so now we're going to plug the original battery in and see if it charges it. Am I asking too much there? Ooh, look at that. Orange light. Can you see that? Is it too light here? I probably have to lower the ISO on the camera for you to see that. Yeah, let's look. Can you see the orange light? I lowered the ISO a bunch. Let's lower it a little more. There you go. See that? That means we're charging. So that is it, and we fixed our problem, which is pretty cool. I like having a successful repair, and since I heard the dong, I know my audio probably works. Let's see, Q, let me just see what that audio I see was for. Q9425, that's actually not for audio. I was being a dumbass. That is actually for Thunderbolt. Yep, I'm dumb. That was not for audio. That was Thunderbolt. I had it mixed up. My bad. Sorry about that. So, I'm sure that works just fine. So, that's about it for that board. And, awesome.